Chesterfield presents Paul Whiteman and his orchestra. Rhapsody in Blue, Chesterfield time, pleasure time with Paul Whiteman, and if you smoke, ask for Chesterfields. Their refreshing mildness and that taste that smokers like make Chesterfield a better cigarette for you to smoke. Now, the Chesterfield Orchestra, along with Joan Edwards, our singing star, and the four modern airs, entertained all the folks down in Atlantic City during the Labor Day weekend, and I guess it wasn't all work, because everybody's got a grand suntan, and here comes King Whiteman himself, the picture of health, and ready to start the show. Here he is. Thank you, Paul Douglas, and good evening, coast to coast. The arguments still go on pro and con about swinging the classics. But I feel that if it's musically interesting and well done, it's good entertainment. Anyway, believe it or not, we're going to swing the William Tell Overture. And I hope Rossini, the composer, doesn't turn over. That is more than once lightly. <laughs> After doing that to William Tell, a man ought to do a good deed. So I'll call on Joan Edwards, who is going to sing a swell song with a swell title, Love of My Life. And 
my broken dreams won't mend. Love of my life, I need you. When will the sound of your voice make my poor heart rejoice? The flame. My soul keeps burning on and on. Your name is pounding in my brain from night till dawn. Oh, love of my life, can't you see? Always and always you'll be the love of my life. Broken dreams won't mend. Love of my life, I need you, darling. When will the sound of your voice make my poor heart rejoice? The flame. Within my soul keeps burning on and on. Your name is pounding in my brain from night till dawn. Love of my life, can't you see? there, Joni. That was fine. And now, Paul Douglas, I think you've rested enough. Yes, Mr. Whiteman. Vacation time is over, but if you look back on the summer, you'll remember seeing Chesterfields everywhere you went. At the seashore, in the mountains, by lakes and rivers, and on highways and byways, you saw Chesterfields giving smokers a lot more pleasure. The sun never sets on Chesterfield's popularity. And right now, Paul Whiteman and the orchestra extend greetings across the sea to dear old London town and the new song and dance craze. So roll back the rug and start strutting to the Lambeth Walk. Thank you. 
now I'd like to give out a little advice. Just sit back and relax. Light a Chesterfield and listen to the story of the Dixieland Band. It will be told by our four hysteric historians, the modern heirs. And they're going to hear a little light side swiping by those noted tea garden brothers, Jackson and Charlie. <laughs> Did you ever hear the story of the Dixieland Band? Let me tell you, brother, that the music was grand. They had piano and a clarinet. Only thing they needed was a second cornet. And that's what led to the ruin, ruin of the Dixieland Band. When the folks would holler for the maple leaf rag, they would get to swinging, but the trumpet would drag. They had to keep him because he played so sweet. But they needed someone who could give them the beat. Someone who swung with the rhythm, rhythm of the Dixieland band. He plays so sweetly. Instead of playing, he plays so sweetly. They'd be saying. Got him so they couldn't play right. Finally fixed him on a Saturday night. He hit a figure that was off the chord. Apoplexy got him and he went to the Lord. And that's the pitiful story, story of the Dixieland band. Now they play with white men and they're happy at last. Charlie T's a trumpet man who really can't blast. The way he swings it is an awful shame. Charlie has a brother, Jackson T is his name. And now, folks, here is a sample. They're playing in the Dixieland Band. You know, Mr. Paul Whiteman can change his pace just about as fast as a good major league pitcher, for we go now from the rhythmic to the romantic. Paul Whiteman's new concert arrangement of the latest hit ballad, Now It Can Be Told.
Ah, that was the Grand Whiteman Manor. The king is still the king. And by the way, Paul, we all want to congratulate you on that very swell, that really solid article you wrote for the current issue of Collier's Magazine, the All-American Swing Band. Oh, thank you, Paul. After it was only one man's opinion. But it was really fun, and it's always a pleasure to give credit where credit's due. Mr. Whiteman, I don't suppose there'd be any chance of getting that grand All-American band together in our program, would there? I mean... Oh, uh... man, that would be a dream. <laughs> Say, but those boys are scattered all around the country and pretty busy. But, Paul, confidentially... Yeah? We've got a feature for tonight's program that really hits another <laughs> All-American high. It's a six-piece band that really swings, and the total cost of the instruments, mind you... Is three fifty-eight. Wait a minute, three dollars and fifty-eight cents. Well, Paul, that wouldn't cover the cost of a good pair of drumsticks, would it? Well, no. It kind of flabbergasted me too when the boys got it together. The instruments in my orchestra run about sixty-eight thousand, so three fifty-eight to outfit a six-piece band just about rolled me under the carpet. I gotta know more. Now, come on up here, boys. And Paul Douglas, why don't you sort of take inventory just to see if this thing is all on the level? Do you said just what did you pay for that yam? Thirty-five cents. Well, that's cheap enough. Les Lieber, I'm not going to be silly enough to ask you how much you paid for that famous ten-cent whistle of yours. I'm just going to check up another dime. Yes, Paul, I've paid a high price oh. for fame. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> Wait a, now, Red McKenzie, come on in close. I hope you brought that same comb, that pocket comb you used to make those famous records with the Mound City Blue Blowers. No, Paul, I've bought me a brand new one. It's a Kresge cutie, a quick dime. Oh, well, all right, then we'll add up another dime. Check that one off. Let's see, the total so far is 55 cents. And here's Paul Sterrett, a famous musical arranger by day and a ukulele Romeo by night. Paul, how much did you pay for that box? Well, Paul, this is the aristocrat of the outfit. This mm. costs me $1.98, not including city sales tax. Oh, an economic <laughs> royalist, eh? Right. Well, we're getting into the upper brackets now. That's a total of $2.53. Artie Miller here has a bass fiddle that's made out of an old packing case, a couple of tired strings and some rusty pegs. And, Artie, I want to know how much you went for that overgrown Stradivarius. Well, uh, 85 cent, I'd say. 85 cent? Well, that's all right, too. Fair enough. <laughs> Rollo Leyland, uh, maybe you boys better not play. What did your drum outfit cost you? Paul, I'm going to play one of those big cartons they ship Chesterfields in with a 20-cent pair of whisk brooms. And, boy, I feel as hot as a $3 pistol. Well read, Hamlet. <laughs> Mr. Whiteman, the boys weren't fooling. The total cost, according to my figures, is $3.58. That's all right. So much for economics. But how about harmonics? Boys, let's hear what you do with the little Spanish town. Go on, Spain, boy. Go on, Spain. One, two, three,
All right. There you are, and well worth the money, boys. We won't forget the 358 band for a long time. And if you smoke, you have a perfect right to ask this question. Why is Chesterfield a better cigarette for me? Here's the answer. Chesterfields are better because of the way they're made. The right combination of mild, ripe, homegrown, and aromatic Turkish tobaccos wrapped in pure cigarette paper. Right now, our buyers are on the southern tobacco markets buying these mild, ripe Chesterfield tobaccos by bidding the highest price at public auction. All year round, other Chesterfield buyers live away off in Turkey and Greece in order to get the right kind of aromatic Turkish tobaccos for Chesterfields. And when you smoke them, you'll find Chesterfields better because of what they give you. More smoking pleasure than any cigarette you ever tried. Mr. Whiteman? Joan Edwards and the modern air join talents in our next number. It's a swell rhythm song from Bing Crosby's latest picture, and it's called I've Got a Pocket Full of Dreams. Happiness comes with success, and that I guess is true. But success is more or less. Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams It's my universe Even with an empty purse Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams Would you take the wealth on Wall Street Or a road when nature drives When I calculate I'm worth my weight in golden rod Lucky, lucky me You can live in luxury Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams Get after your care and your worry Chase your troubles with a happy dream I'm no millionaire But I'm not the type to care Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams It's my universe Even with an empty purse Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams wouldn't take the wealth on Wall Street for a road when I to trot. And I calculate I'm worth my weight in gold and rod. Lucky, lucky me. You can live in luxury. What do you have to do to follow your schemes? Just fill your pocket up with plenty of dreams. Have a dream on me and me and me. Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. We like to pull an old favorite out of the hat every now and then, and here's one that's fast and lively and hard to beat. A new arrangement of Farewell Blues.
city in blue. It's always nice playing for you, and we hope you'll be with us next Wednesday. We're going to broadcast from the grounds of the Brockton Fair in Massachusetts. Wherever I go, I hear smokers say, Chesterfields are milder. I like the taste a lot. That's why the sun never sets on Chesterfield's popularity. Thank you, Mr. Whiteman, and thanks to Joan Edwards, the modern heirs, and I'm still amazed, the cut rate 358 band. You all gave us a lot of pleasure, which is just what Chesterfield stands for. This is Paul Douglas bidding you all good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.